yebo ke ba ikse ba mashelo radio le go ba khotsa be kahle e ka nokona go kahle swinene wa mashelo drive na DJ Janis Tolle the most dangerous DJ in the world wa ko ko for the that boy is dangerous kas e ka sekura na montlane khomi a special guest ba ku suka ka babsa la benga ta ba khaya bula bula bona bula na bona la benga le ku contestant ka xitulu xa bo president ku ri u stiva ku ri ta ba kho u selecta bo man ku vote la bo man e ka nkarwe lo ya ka wona wa nhlawulo so e ka nkarwe se swane hone ku ne ba amkela hi ndlela le wan good day menjani e ka sekura na montla mr ndo eh ya bushane fukile menjani hi na e tsikile swinene e tsikile swinene ku bona me fikile ko kwa la wan a studio sha hina you know i'm so excited uh, to have someone who represents a very very big profile uh, you are a boxer by profession you are a lawyer by profession or i can say a former boxer uh, by profession and a person who has uh, managed to reach a lot of uh, great heights uh, where you've also competed from 1993 to 2012 which is so amazing and you also hold a junior welterweight uh, championship uh, for IBF for the for the year of 2007 and also an IBO welterweight title for the year of 2009 until 2010 uh, so it's such an honor to have you in our studio sir uh, you also have fought 64 fights 49 wins and 31 of those wins were by KO what an amazing amazing man that we are having here today uh, i also read there that you are also a, a partly australian or something can you please <laughs> explain to me about that <laughs> uh, thanks for that intro so i hold dual citizenship yes um So I left uh, South Africa in 1996. Wow. Only two years after we had our first democratic elections. Yes. Um and I've been based there for 27 years. Wow. But um you know I've been coming back and forth um and uh I've been very very interested uh, in um South African politics. So when I when I left South Africa I I didn't cut you know the umbilical cord. Yes. Um so I the best way to put it it's um I've remained you know uh observant you know of the ANC meet over the years yes uh and um been concerned you know mostly about the current situation that you know our country is uh, on the brink of collapse if nothing is done now mm, you know uh, we're we'll probably going to end up like you know some of our neighboring countries like uh, Zimbabwe wow I Now understand. talking about uh, you know boxing you know it all started here you know yes. Um, yes. I used to train here when I was an amateur I used to train here you know with uh, with the great you know Mr Baloy yes yes you yes you know uh, you know uh, Eric Baloy and uh, you know we used to train together with Cassius you know your local hero yes yes so we can, yeah you know I used to travel here all the time and do some training and sometimes I would actually stay at Mr Baloy's home you know for uh-huh. the weekend so this is uh, more like uh, my second oh. home or wow. their home <laughs> so you mean kokwan baloi the one and the one i know the one who, who runs the the boxing gym here in in, in malamlele that's correct wow. that's correct yeah wow, you know that's amazing so you know he's um when i talk about people that i've actually contributed to my boxing career i he's included in that list so wow. mr baloi and uh you know the late chief mazibandira from chakuma yes, you know yes. they played a big role yes. in my boxing career Oh that's amazing that's amazing. Uh but today you are wearing a different hat altogether. You want to help South Africans choose their candidate of presidency and where you are running for uh the election as an independent candidate. Please let me know about why you took that decision. I mean a lot of people can say that you were a boxer, you did well and you have won many titles. You don't have to be in South Africa, you also hold another ti- uh, citizenship of another country. Why did you decide to go into uh the the the, the election? so to want to say i want to campaign to become the president of south africa look um going into politics it, uh, in, into politics is a profound decision you know a decision that should never be made yes. you know based on personal personal ambition only mm. uh mm. It, it's a decision that should be made you know uh on the need for change yes so i i am con- like i said earlier on you know um when we started this conversation that you know, i'm concerned about the current you know our state of our country Uh, and uh, I want to fight for a better South Africa in you know, a South Africa where the future of our children is guaranteed yes. uh, you know it's uh, it's no secret you know that uh, you know the ANC has failed you know the people of South Africa I mean it's been 30 years mm. you know uh, 30 years is a lot of time you know to bring 
change. You know, I'm concerned that you know the direction we are taking, uh, it's not the right direction. You know, and if we continue in this direction, mm. you know, um, there will be no future for our children in this country. Mm. Makes a lot of sense, and you know, uh, some people will not uh, actually see the need to actually come back and say, "Hey, I, I'm a candidate. I think I can do something appropriate for this country. I think I can bring change. I have seen how uh, countries are run. I have seen a different life besides the one that I know, and I want to bring that uh, to home." So another thing that I love so much is that there is a political party that has been formed by the name Babsa. Can you please explain um, the, that political party and how you affiliated with it? Okay, so um, I was in the process, you know, of putting a political party together called BAPSA, Building a Better South Africa. Yes. When uh, the aim was, uh, you know, to contest the 2029 elections. Yes. But then when uh, uh, President Ramaphosa made an, you know, an, uh, an announcement that, you know, for the first time independent candidates can run, I decided I might, I might as well just run, you know, uh, as an independent candidate. So you will see that, you know, Babsa is affiliated, you know, with Love More. So if you see, you know, uh, a logo, a uh, big heart with yes. Babsa inside uh, the heart, that's what, it, you know, it stands for Love More. Uh, it stands for, ba you know, building a better South Africa, which is associated with me. Uh, so I can tell you right now that in the, bi in the next by-elections uh, in 2026 and in the next elections in 2029, I'll be running as Babsa, you know, building a better South Africa. Wow. Now, you mentioned, uh, you know, uh, why, uh, yes. you know, come back to, to South Africa. Yes, yes. Yeah, and, and I totally agree with you, you know, uh, I have a great lifestyle in Australia, you know, I've done well for myself, you know, I've achieved a lot, you know, and for me to come back, yeah, I'm actually sacrificing a lot, you know, particularly, you know, economically, you know, yes. uh, and, and family, you know, my children are so based, you know, in, in Australia, so I've had to give up, you know, that to come here. Mm -hmm. Why? Because, you know, as a citizen, I feel I have a responsibility. You know, I can't just sit back, you know, and, you know, and, and watch my country falling apart, you know, yeah. and, and I believe as a responsible citizen, you know, uh, I have that responsibility, you know. Um, I can quote two great men, you know, Dante Algieri, you know, an Italian philosopher, yes. and Martin Luther King Jr., you know, they both once said, you know, you know, if you choose to remain neutral, you know, uh, during times of uh, uh, moral conflict, mm. uh, you know, uh, then the best, uh, you know, the, the, the best place, you know, the, the worst place in hell is reserved for you. Sure. So, Meaning, if you don't do, if you're in a position where to do something, or you know, and you don't do it, you're just as bad as those people that are doing. Mm. So, if I just sit back, you know, and just look, you know, while my country is falling apart, yes, and I mean, I'm in a position where I can help, you yes. know, I've got the voice, yes. you know, uh, yes. if I don't do anything, I'm just as bad as all these corrupt leaders. Mm. So, I'm mm. really I'm concerned about you know the corruption in the country. Uh, you know, and personally, I feel you know it stemmed from you know policies like you know the BEE, the mm -hmm. Black Economic mm -hmm. you know Empowerment. Yes. And 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 believe me, you know, uh, I'm not saying the policy was bad. You know, I, I'm saying, yes. you know, if you look at it, you know, the policy, you know, uh, the idea behind the policy is laudable, mm. but you know, uh, it, the policy itself turned into a trigger, you know, of an avalanche of corruption. Mm. You know, uh, it only been it's only benefiting. The elite it's mm. only benefiting those in power mm -hmm. it's not benefiting you know the ordinary person and not just that it's also um you know uh, it keeps potential investors away mm -hmm. you know we have a lot of in, you know uh, international investors who would like to come and invest in in south africa yes, true. but because of be you know and the over regulations mm. you know they won't come around you know um i, I always tell people you know some of the richest people in the world, they come from South Africa. Yes. You know, I uh, look at, you know, Elon Musk. Yes. You know, yes. Uh, yes. He's, he's a South African. You know, he's based abroad. He will never come invest here because of, mm. you know, the uh, over regulations. Yes. So we need to replace BEE, you know, with a policy, you know, that will allow broader participation in the economy mm. by all people of South Africa, irrespective of color. Mm. You know, some people might say, well, love more... Um, the white people, you know, benefited, you know, from the economy over the years. Yeah, yes, true. that's but correct. In terms of apartheid, yes. Yes, that's correct. And I, I don't dispute that. Yes. But if you look in the last 30 years, you know, that the, you know, the current, you know, government has been in power. Yes. Uh, you know, we've actually gone a lot of steps back. You know, true. we haven't moved forward, you know. Uh, mm. But also, if you look at it, um, 
even the white people, you know, the majority of the you know up and coming businessmen, you know, the majority of them were born, you know, maybe just prior to nineteen ninety four. The majority of them were born in after nineteen ninety four. Yes. You know, uh, so I'm saying we've had a you know uh, a time, you know, to balance things. You know, uh, I think it's time now we start you know playing on a fair level field, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, and just let people you know, be judged or let people, you know, uh, uh, achieve what they can, you know, they can achieve based on their performance, not based on color. Mm, I love that. And you know, the, the thing that a lot of people might be asking themselves um, is that they've lost hope in politics. They've lost hope in the country. As you've said, that other political parties have not represented them uh, very well. Some people might ask themselves, why should I vote for Mr. Love Mondo? What, why, why should I vote for him? Why, what, what change does he wish to bring into South Africa? Well, for a number of reasons. One, yes. I'm an educated man. Yes. You know, I hold seven university degrees, you know, and they, you know, they, you know, they go from law Yes. You know, to yes. politics, governance, policy, you know, international law, human rights law. Um, and, and, and I also think, you know, uh, leadership. Leadership is something you're either born with or without, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know. Uh, mm -hmm. And I believe, you know, uh, I have that leadership, you know. I've got the leadership skills in me. And, uh, and I, but apart from that, if you look at it, uh, I've got nothing else. I got nothing else to gain, you know, uh, mm -hmm. by going into politics. And uh, like I said to you, you know, if anything, you know, uh, I'm you know, it's affecting me economical. I've got, n I've got no other ulterior motive other than to serve, you know, uh, the people of South Africa. Mm -hmm. I've got no other ulterior motive other than to lead South Africa out of the crisis that was created by the ANC, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and look. Some people might say, look, you've been based in, in, in Australia for 27 years. You know, how do you know about the problems we're facing? Well, like I said, I'd never cut you know, the umbilical cord when I left. You know, I've yes. always been an observer of the ANC meets. So um, I actually know more about South African politics than some of the people that have, that have never left the country. Yes. You know, and, and, and I believe, I also believe, you know, the fact that, you know, uh, I, I have been, you know, abroad, you know, Makes me, you know, gives me, makes, gives me that advantage because you know, I'm not corrupt like the rest of them. I have never benefited from corruption. Everything I've owned and everything I've, you know, uh, is something. Everything I own is, uh, you know, is something that I worked hard for, you know. I, and I always tell people, you know, my story is my story, my own story. You know, is a quintessential, you know, South African story. Yes. You know, I, I come from a poor background. I've had to work hard. I didn't start school till I was nine years of of age. You know, but you look at me today. I got you know seven university degrees. You know, and I got. It just goes to prove that you know, with perseverance and hard work, you know, you can achieve everything. Mm -hmm. And I always say. Anything I set my mind on, I will achieve. You yeah. know, it might take me longer to achieve, but I will achieve it. So if I'm telling you that you know I'm going to change South Africa, you know, and build a better South Africa for all, yes. believe me, I'm going to do that. You know, because I bring that fighting spirit. I'm a fighter by nature. Yes. You know, I might get knocked down many times, but I'll get up and continue fighting. And that's what separates you know champions from you know contenders. I love that. I, I love the fact that you you did not just um, take this position just because you know that people love you, people supported you in boxing, and they'll vote for you just because they see the face. But there's also a skill behind it. There's also knowledge behind it. There's also experience behind it, and that's why you want to contest and put yourself in that position. And another thing that many people might ask also ask is what are some of the challenges that you as uh, Love Mondo would love to change within South Africa or within the realm of South Africa at the current moment? Well, there's a lot. You yes. know, to start with, you know, it's corruption. You know, we need to get rid of True. corruption. True. You know, uh, and the way to get rid of corruption, you start with BE. You gotta get rid of BE and replace it, you know, with a better policy. You know, that will allow broader participation. You know, yes. uh, in, in, in broader participation in the economy by all people of South Africa. And then you you have to educate people. Education mm -hmm. is, you know, is important. You know, somebody once said the power is in the pen. I believe in that. You know, I, I, I optimize education. So, yeah. you know, uh, and I tell, I can tell you right now, yes. you know, uh, you know, when, and I'm not saying if, yes. you know, I'm saying yes. when, you know, when I'm in power one day, yes. you know, I will introduce a better educational system, yes. you know, that will allow South Africans, you know, to be rated, you know, uh, you know, uh, like any other you know person in the world now we've got a situation where you know um 
if a South African goes to a country like Australia or the UK, you know, mm. qualified as a doctor or something else, yes. when they get there, they have to do another course, you know, okay. to, you know, but when, when someone from Australia or, you know, or the UK comes here, yes. they don't have to do any other course because, you know, the educational system is different. Mm. So I want a better educational system here. In fact, I want to see a child that attends a public school, mm. you know, having the same dream, you know, and opportunities, you know, as the child that attends, you know, a private school. Yes. You know, yes. And I want to see, you know, that every youth, you know, that has the right grades and the will, you know, to attend university be given that opportunity to attend university it's 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 not impossible it is possible it can be done and i'm an example of that you know i was telling it before that you know my story you know is a quintessential you know south african story you know um i have gone through what everybody's going through you know i didn't leave the country during apartheid i was through i was here you know um you know i left south africa you know after we had our first democratic elections so i was exposed to everything that everybody you know was exposed to i witnessed all the atrocities committed you know against my friends and and family members like everyone else you know but the difference with me is you know i was able to move to another country that provided me with those opportunities you know to yeah. prove myself yes. so i'm saying if we provide south african youth or our children with those opportunities they can actually do better than me wow. you know i i, I want to see a country where we got doctors we got lawyers you know that are treated with respect you know um so that's the educational part of it but i also I would make sure, you know, our teachers are paid well. Yes. Because I've yes. got a lot of respect for teachers. You know, yes. they te- our teachers shape our lives. They shape our children's lives. Sure. They need to be paid well, you know. Um, then, you know, after the educational system, the other thing you got to look at is jobs. Yes. People need jobs. Yes, true. Okay. True. True. Now, the housing, you know, people need better housing, you know. Uh, you got to remember when, you know, uh, when the ANC came into power in 1994, you know, they, they made a lot of promises, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they promised better housing, better education, you know, uh, better health care systems, you know. Um, where are those things they promised? Mm. Okay, we still have people living in shacks, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. you know. And this can be easily solved, you know. Um, for example, you know, uh, in... in you know, you can always replace, you know, shacks with modular homes, you know. Yes. Modular yes. homes are yes. affordable, yes. you know, affordable and easy and quicker, you know, a quick, you know, you can you can build a modular home within eight, eight weeks yes. and, and, and it's a good home. So my plan in, when it comes to housing is I'm going to bring, you know, uh, people that are qualified in building mod- modular homes and I'm going to get them here. I already got people on standby in Australia, I'll bring them here. I'll get them to teach the local people how to build those homes. And then, you know, the local people can build those homes. So it creates jobs while at the same time, you know, you know, uh, solving the housing, you know, uh, yeah, problem, yes, yes. you know, and it allo- also allows these people, you know, to buy those homes themselves because they're so cheap, Yes, you know, yes, but it's a yes. better home compared, you know, to living in shacks, living in a shack, yes, yes, you yes, know, yes, um, yes, then you got the issue about crime, you know, the other issue about corruption mm. is we got mm. our police mm. system is so corrupt, mm. it is corrupt, you know, and the only way to fix it is to educate our police, you know, pay them better, mm-hmm. give them a pay rise. One of the reasons why they're so corrupt is because they're getting paid peanuts. Mm. You know, if you pay them well and then, you know, you you make sure there are more police, you know, going into the academy and yes. get, in fact, getting paid while, you know, yes. they're going into yes. the aca- academy. Yes. It encourages them to love what they're doing. And, you know, if they're getting paid well, you know, then, you know, it reduces, you know, crime. Not to say, you know, there's, I'm sure there will still be others that will still be corrupt. But then you put in, you know, a, you know, a, a, a legal system, you yes. know, a strong legal system where you, sh- you make sure anyone that is corrupt, you know, goes to jail. Mm. You know, it's simple. Currently, we've got a situation where the rule of law doesn't apply. Mm. You know, we've mm. got a situation That's where those in, those in power think, you know, they... You know, they they they, they law unto themselves. Mm. That mm. that needs to change. Mm. Mm. 
I understand that. And you know, one thing I love about the topics that you, you have touched um, was one of the topics that I wanted to ask you about, which is high unemployment. And also, we are also facing a current stage where we have load shedding. What are your views on load shedding? And, and what do you think, as an independent candidate, can you bring to the table that well, can counter that? It actually concerns me that, you know, uh, not so long ago, you know, the president, you know, uh, during his uh, State of the Nation address, yes. you know, he tried to downplay the issue about load shedding. He tried to downplay the issue about housing. He tried to downplay play the issue about you know uh, uh, water what the water crisis mm. you know it concerns me that you know what we're here we have a you know we have uh, a government that doesn't even acknowledge mm. they don't acknowledge the wrongs they are doing yes. you know it takes someone who acknowledges the wrong they are doing to fix that problem so the ANC is not going to fix these problems because they don't acknowledge that they're doing anything wrong mm. you know uh I hate to say it, yes. but, you know, truth be told, mm. you know, even though most of us during apartheid didn't have electricity, but we didn't have, you know, this type of load shedding, mm. you know, and, and it's funny, you know, the, the worst thing about it, it's, uh, we've, you know, we've had more load shedding, you know, uh, under in a Ramaphosa's administration. So mm. what does that tell you? You know, I always, sell, I always tell people that, you know, you know uh, of all our pr you know, presidents, you know, uh, Zuma was the most corrupt one. Mm. You know, whereas Ramaphosa is the most useless one. Mm. That's how I see it. <laughs> I understand that. I understand that. Yo, you know, yo. In, in terms of fixing, you know, um, uh, the, the le electricity issue, you know, uh, yes. at some stage, you know, you're going to have to privatize, yes. you know, uh, ESCOM. Oh, okay. okay. You okay. know, yeah, so understand. Understand. you, what you have to do, you know, it's, uh, you're going to have, have to work on the current, yes. you know, uh, infra yes. infrastructures. Yes. You know, why at the same time, you know, you're introducing renewables, yes. you know, uh, but remember, there's also, you know, the, the coal mafia that you have to deal with. Yes. And these people are connected, you know, with people in power. Mm. So you're going to have to get rid of the coal mafia. One of the ways to do that is, you know, build a strong police force or get the military involved. Mm. Okay. Get mm. the military involved and, you know, you can fix, because we've got a situation where, you know, good coal. Mm you know, is being, you know, uh, stolen and sold abroad, whereas bad coal mm. is used and it's, it's destroying, you know, the grids and everything. It's mm. destroying our power stations. Mm. So that, that needs to be stopped, mm. you know. But again, if you privatize ESCOM, yes. you know, obviously, if it's a private entity, those who own that entity will make sure that it's protected. Mm. At the moment, we've got a situation where, you know, those in power don't care because you know what they're involved with the mafia. Mm. Okay, mm. this problem is not going to stop. You know, yes. look at recently. You know, if you look in Jerere, you know, a few days ago, you know, they've had a strike. You know, water crisis and all that. Yes. And yes. this has been yes. ongoing for years. Mm. You know, uh, I just you know about two weeks ago, you know, um, uh, you know, I attended Musina and there was a flood. You know, and the flood damaged a lot of shacks. Yes. And and the problem there is where these shacks are built mm. you know next to a sewage mm. you know next to a spring and what happens is when you know when the spring overflows overflows you know with the sewage it's not just water going into people's houses okay um, it's mm. sewage waste yes. going into houses yes. you know and it's mixing you know so it's it was really really touching for me to see mm. some of this going you know it's, it's pretty much in their groceries, okay? Yeah, I so my I team, Babsa team, we've had to go there and help people clean up. We've had to pay and help buy, you know, groceries for people. We, some kids lost their school books and all. We've had to pay for them, for the, you know, buy for them new books. We've had to buy them new unif school uniforms and all that. Yes. But yes. the municipality wasn't doing anything. Mm. It's only that after they seen what we were doing, that's when they send a group to start helping. So had I not instigated that, mm. nothing would have been done. Mm. Same situation happened in uh, in Toyando. Yes. You know, about a week ago, you know, uh, I got on the radio. I was interviewed. Somebody, you know, uh, one of um, the um, somebody dialed in and asked, you know, and told me about the problem they're facing with the sewage. You yes. know, uh, there was a sewage blockage that's been going on for 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 weeks, and it's next to a market, a market where people sell food. Okay, and the municipality hadn't done anything about it, and somebody asked me if I could help. Okay, so I went and hired some plumbers to fix it. Yes. Okay, it's, yes. and the community came and helped. Yes. You know, they helped us fix that problem. Mm. It's only that, you know, 
We started there. That's when the municipality sent some, you know, some mm. people to come help. Mm. So had I not instigated that, nothing would have been done. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So understand. Understand. Yo, I can see there's a problem of accountability and representation when it comes to leadership. And one of the things that I want to also ask you is that a lot of people, they um, when they get into into power or when they want to get into power, they promise a lot of things. What are some of the things that you can uh, also put reference to? Because some people can also say, were you a politician before this? Did you actually do some um, work in the political space? And what is your reason for campaigning independently at this time around? The reason for campaigning independently is because I don't believe there's any other party there. Yes. You know, I don't believe in their philosophies and uh, and, and policies. Yes. A number of parties have you know uh, approached me mm. you know, to see if you know I could join them or you know form an, an an alliance with them. I'm just not satisfied at this stage. You know that you know uh, you know they align with me. Yes. You know and 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 look, I can only talk about the party that has been in power. Mm. You know, it's, mm. it's 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 proven that in its failed the people. So I think it would be wrong for me to start talking about you know these new parties that have never Understand. you know Understand. been empowered. T- talking about them in a negative way. Understand. You know, I think let you know give them a chance. Mm. Let's see what they can do. You know, if they start doing better, then I'll start talking. You know, uh, one thing about me as an independent candidate is, you know, so I become the voice of the voiceless. Yes. I, you know, I'll be calling out any corruption that I see, and I'm not scared to mm. to do that. Mm. You know, um, you say why politics? Yes. You know, I think I've answered that several times. Yes. You know, I'm yes. concerned about the current you know, state of our country. Mm. You know, our country is on the brink of collapse. Mm. You know, and I'd, I've explained that if I don't do as as a as a as a, uh, a citizen. I have a responsibility, yes. you know, to fix yes. my country. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, look in, in terms of what what do I bring on the table? I bring a lot of you know, you know, uh, you know. I mean, I bring a lot of experience. Yes, you know, I'm an educated man. Mm-hmm. You know, one problem that we as Africans often make. Yes, you know, and yes. I'm not just talking about South Africa. I'm talking about Africa in general. Yes, you know, we seem to think that you know the freedom fighters, you know. Uh, the liberators yes. should be the ones running a country. Yes. Often they're not qualified mm. and they often run the country down the drain. Mm. And we've seen it many times. Mm-hmm. You know, just because you're a great liberator doesn't mean you can run a country. Mm. And often these people, you know, they run a country like it's a b- family business. Okay. And they destroy the country. Okay. The problem we're facing in South Africa is we have a lot of unqualified leaders. Yes. You know, I bring I bring qualifications, you know. Mm. In fact, look, the current Australian, you know, uh, government, yes. you know, they've been trying to get me, mm-hmm. you know, to work with them, you yes. know. The current premier of New South Wales, you know, he's been trying to get me to join the Labour Party, you know, but I you know, I I had to thank them and say, look, my heart is in South Africa. That's why I'm here, wow. you know. Yes. So, to answer your question, wow. you know, I'm, 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 I bring a lot of, you know, qualifications. Yes. And, yes. you know, leadership is something I believe, you know, it was instilled in me from childhood. Mm. I love that. And, you know, one thing I love about leaders that are passionate about helping people and not just going to the position because they believe they can gain something after it or they believe that they're going to in the position because they want to utilize a certain power or a certain aspect of that power to their advantage. And I love the fact that you, you, you are saying that I'm just passionate about helping my country. And you have also shown many instances currently, not uh, the ones that we can reference from 2000 and something, but it's currently and something. It's like every time you see a problem, Problem, you want to solve it and you will really solve it but the problem is the current state of the country is much larger and you want to go to the broader aspect to help all the other aspects that are really uh, facing a lot of atrocities so another thing that i also want to you to also tell to our listeners is what are your last words to the listeners and if you become a president on the when year, i become when you become a president of south africa um what is the first thing that we are changing we're gonna get rid of corruption yes that has to go. Yes. You know, I've already explained. First thing you get, you know, you have to replace policies like BE, you yes. know, with better policies. Yes. Okay. And then, you know, we got to fight crime. Yes. We got to educate people. We got we got to create job opportunities for people. Yes. Okay. Yes. You know, it saddens me, mm-hmm. you know, uh, 
when I walk around and I see a child, you know, that goes to bed in an empty stomach, or a child that's walking around, you know, yes. uh, bare feet, a child that's walking around naked, you know, yes. because, yeah. you know, the parents can't afford, you know, to, you know, to take care of the child because yes. of, you know, not because they don't want to work, yes. but because of, you know, uh, the situation, but because of what they've been, you know, what this current government is doing. It concerns me. Whether the child is my child or not, it concerns me. Mm. Okay, mm. when I see you know our our, our our grannies walking around having to look after you know their grandchildren you know while receiving you know uh, a, a, you know a grand that's next to nothing, True. it concerns True. me. True. Okay, when I see our grannies you know having to just stay home you know with no help at all you know uh, because there are no um, you know you don't have uh, aged care here you don't have good aged care. It concerns me whether she's my mother or not or my grandmother or not. It concerns me, you know. When I see a brother or an, a father, you know, that has to resort to crime to feed, you know, their children, it concerns me whether I'm related to that person or not. I love that. I love that. And you know, for for someone of your stature. It's very, very true what you said that you're not out of touch with the problems and situations that are happening currently in the South African realm. What are your last words to the listeners or to the supporters that are watching you for the first time now and they say, I want to vote for you. How can I follow you? How can I get in touch with this movement? Because now you're running as an independent candidate and some of them might be confused uh, on the two aspects because we are used to people using parties and stuff like that. So how can they get in touch? How can they support? How can they join in in your or your journey that you have started recently okay so as an independent candidate you know mm. uh, i just need enough votes enough yes. votes to secure a seat in the national assembly yes. once i'm in the national assembly i become a voice for the voiceless you okay. know yes. then i'm able yes. to keep an eye you know on, on what's happening in the government i'm a- able to vote for and vote against you know policies that i believe are not right for the country yes. you know i'm able to in you know to uh, uh propose you know certain policies or certain you know uh, bills you know and uh, so i become the voice for the voiceless um ob- obviously you know i need to run as a party to become a president yes you know, and yes. and um, like i said you know in the next few years in the ne- in the next ele- not these elections yeah, I understand. you know in, in the le- elections to come i'll be going in as a party yes. now this is the thing um i always say what i'm going to tell people now yes. is people need to ask themselves you know what has improved since 1994 mm. okay what has improved you have to look at your lifestyle mm. and ask yourself mm. do you want to have another 30 years of this mm. you know do you want to have another 30 years of, you know of struggling do you ha- want to have another 30 years of you know having to pay a bribe to secure a job Eesh. yeah yeah okay understand. do you want to have another 30 yeah. years you know of being denied a job that you're qualified for because mm. you're not you know, affiliated with you know a certain party, or you're not related, you know, to some 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 of the you know political leaders. So we need to get you know rid of nepotism, you know, cronyism, elitism. We need to get rid of that. So what I'm gonna say is, people need to decide, you know, whether they're happy with the ANC. Okay, if they're not happy with the ANC, they need to vote. Vote for a party or in someone you believe is gonna do the right thing. I'm not coming here to ask people to vote for me. Mm. Okay, mm. if you don't believe in what I say or you don't think I'm the right person, don't vote for me. But vote for someone else you know mm. who's gonna do the right thing for you. But if you believe, if you believe I'm the man who's gonna deliver, then vote for me. Mm. You know. Um, yes. So, like I said, this is the time. It's been thirty years, people. Thirty years. Mm. Thirty years of a failed government. You know, the direction we're taking is a wrong direction. If we continue this way, you know, this we might as well kiss South Africa goodbye. Mm. such powerful words and I, I'm sure that uh, for a lot of listeners and a lot of inquiries that you guys might have, a lot of questions that you might have um, regarding Mr. Love Mosendo's journey or um, his presidency election uh, uh, journey um, has been answered. If not, please make sure that you go reach us on our social media pages. Uh, we are going to make sure that as time goes, we are going to proceed to have him back if possible. Uh, he's, he's, he's rushing somewhere right now because as you, you've heard, that is someone that is uh, helping 
helping the community in the current stage. And he's, he, when he's here in South Africa, he wants to solve the challenges that are here. He's not someone who's coming uh, just because he doesn't have something to do, but then he has shown, he has seen the level of things that are happening in South Africa and is not happy with it. And he has shown that there's a lot of demand from other political spheres, even outside of the country, but he has chosen to become a candidate because he wants to simply help the common South African. And he has talked about the common problems that are happening. He has talked about the high elite problems that we have in this country. He has pro talked about a lot of issues that I feel that a lot of politicians don't really go into. So I'm really impressed with your reputation, Mr. Ndo, and I wish you nothing but the best in your uh, campaigning or in your journey of election of presidency. I hope to have you again when you have time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yebo keba in Sarwa ina Ayrna Bona Ika Sukura na Monta Morangere Mr. Love Mondo Yana Matem coming Sela Rich Shai Dasha Mashello Radio Susan Tabaka Gutekala Sumura Kashnekokalawane